Hey everyone, it's Amy Astro here, and I bet you didn't think you were going to see me this week. Well, got one on you. I planned ahead, scheduled it, and just for you, a brand new video. And this week, we're going to tag along with what we did last week where we talked about what was underneath the Star Maiden. So this week, I'm going to share with you the Raven Scope and what it looked like before yesterday when I made a small change. So we redid the Raven Scope from top to bottom. We eliminated some weight and I'm going to show you what I'm about to do. So stay tuned. A quick walk down memory lane. Here is the Raven Scope, and this is how I have been running it for about two years. And then all of a sudden, Pegasus Astro offered a new toy. And yeah, well, I bought it. So now I'm going to rearrange this scope and see how I can incorporate this new Pegasus Astro Power Box Advanced into this scope. But I wanted you to quickly take note that I have across the top one of those 14 inch long um, Los Mondi D bars across the top and those things weigh about two and three quarters to three pounds. And on that I have my mini PC. I have a handle raised up on um, some risers so I can get my hand under it. And I've got a powered USB hub that is double sided tape onto the edge of it. I've also got my power distribution, which is the Anderson power poles, the PD-8s, and I have my dew heater attached to that with double-sided tape. So I have an awful lot going on that top rail. So let's see what I'm thinking of now with the new version of the Raven. All right, so now that we've taken a look at what the uh, Raven Scope used to look like, this is what it looks like right now. And the whole reason that I did this was because I had purchased the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Advanced Box. And I did this so I could eliminate some items on my scope, making this an all-in-one box. But this also means that if this fails, everything could fail. So I'm not sure which is the best route, but for right now, I'm gonna use this. So this is how the Raven Scope is looking right now. It's all cleaned up, and I ended up having to raise up the, um, the scope from the rail so that my night crawler would not hit the table when it was sitting on my desktop between use. And I rotated the night crawler um, to be in the vertical position so I could have everything lined up here in a nice plane and trying to maintain a center of gravity here where I don't have too much on one side versus the other side, too much on the front versus on the back. But right now it is admittedly a bit back heavy. I mean, the glass on the front being the triplet is heavy alone but not quite as heavy as what I've got going on here. Now with removing this top rail that I had before, I managed to save myself about three and a half pounds of total weight. And that is terrific. I mean, this will help me move this thing around a lot better. And I, I'm really liking that. But you'll see that I kept my handle and I'm really attached to having a handle on the telescope because it just helps me move it around easier. And on the top is where I'll put my telerad, you know, when I need it to find those um, guides, those um, alignment stars and whatnots, you know, when I choose to do it that way. But right now, my thoughts are, I have my mini PC here, which on one side has got the USB, the HDMI, and power, Ethernet. On another side, it's got the power button and two more HDMI, uh, two more USBs but I've got a blank side and a side here with a fan on it. 
So because I've got two sides together with ports on them, I can't really put it in the middle here because I'll be hitting one of the cables against the spacers. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the smooth side because there's no vents there and I think I'm going to put it right up there on the front of my scope and we're just going to put it there and I'm going to use double sided um, velcro and the, the high strength one and that works out really well connecting those mini PCs and the Pegasus power box it has the four USB 3's on one side along with an adjustable power and this is the USB going to the PC. I have an external temperature sensor that plugs in here and that temperature sensor talks with the software that's in here to give me an adjustable output on the dew heaters which that is really nice because now it's no more guessing of me putting my dew heaters on high and hoping that that works when really I probably don't need to be consuming that much power, but it, I never have to worry about dew if it's always on. And this way, you know, I can save my battery life, which is great. I've got four 12 volt power outlets, and right now I'm going to have my night crawler on one, my mini PC, my camera cool function, and my mount. So all four of these are going to be taken up, and I have my 12 volt power supply going into this that's powering everything up. But they've designed it so I have connections on each side, one on the end, and nothing on this end. So I'm probably going to be putting it in about right here. And that will be double side tape velcroed in also. They do sell some mounting brackets, but they're currently on back order and I can't get hold of any. So rather than wait any longer to get this thing going, I'm just going to use the Velcro for now. But you're going to see right here when I put these spacers in, I had to add a couple washers. And the whole reason I had to add those washers was the screw that I had available was slightly too long going from the bottom threading up and it threads into here. And I didn't want to, you know, crack my tube at all being carbon fiber. Didn't think that'd be too smart. So for safety, I put in two washers. But that's where we're gonna put the Pegasus. And I thought you'd like to see this before I added all the wires and hid everything on you. But this should make it nice and neat. You know, saving about three and a half pounds is gonna be wonderful on my back and it's gonna be a little bit easier to, you know, take care of. But I've got two dew heater straps that's gonna end up going on there. And I can't cut these cables to make them shorter. Trust me, I've tried. The cables in here are so tiny. I mean, they're smaller than a 22 gauge that it was really hard for me to work with. I just don't have the, the tools and knowledge to uh, mess with those. So they stay long and they'll probably be coiled up underneath here. The power box came with a cigarette lighter power cord and this goes into the power box. But my power supply does not have this plug on it. At least when I'm using 120 volt AC power when I'm out at Deer Lake. Now when I'm on my battery, I can use this. So what I've got here is an adapter that is, has an Anderson power pole and then the cigarette lighter um, female on one side and I'll just pop them together and plug this into my power box. And this will work out really well and it's got a fuse on here. And I picked these up from uh, Valley Electronics off of uh, Amazon. And I had to purchase this guy separate. This powers my mount. And this goes into the Pegasus Astro Box. So this is how I'm going to power my mount. And it comes with four of these. And these happen to be the right size to go into my, um, my computer into the night crawler and into the camera down there at the end. So this works out really well and it came in the box. Also what came in the box, but I had misplaced it, as I do sometimes because I've actually had that power box for, oh goodness, probably six to eight weeks now. And I keep watching for the brackets. The brackets haven't come in, so you know, I'm moving forward with this project now. And in the meantime, I have misplaced the temperature sensor. So that comes in the box, but I don't know where I put it in my house and I need to, I guess I need to clean, you know, so I can find it. 
but we'll do that real soon. But I guess next time you see it, it's going to have all these uh, USB cables on here, power cables. It's going to be jumbled up, zip tied together. I think I'm going to put my um, guide scope across here. But by doing that, you're going to look down here and you'll see it's going to add too much weight on this side versus this side, which was not my goal. So for homework for you guys is if there's somebody out there that has a suggestion for me, please leave it down in the comments below. What I would like to do is I'm thinking about mounting my guide scope across the top here. But when I do that, I lose my handle. And I really don't want to use my guide scope as my handle, being this is a heavier rig, is I, I'm afraid that I might damage it or something, and it just doesn't seem smart to be lifting it up and down by the guide scope. So can you come up with a way for me to maintain the center mass with the guide scope and a handle and not make it three stories tall? Really, this is about as tall as I want to go. But I'm thinking, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a way. If you guys know of a way, uh, let me know. Um, I have thought about adding another rail on here, but again, I was trying to eliminate some weight. So think about it and leave me a comment below on any suggestions you've got. So this is the path that the Raven's going to take. And well, I have been without clear nights, oh goodness, almost two months now. So I don't have any data, no photons, no nothing. I've got to get outside. So I need to get this back together so I'm ready when we have clear skies. All right, guys, so what did you think about this video? Did you like the ideas that I've got going on for the Raven Scope? Do you have any ideas of how I can improve the Raven Scope, you know, just a little bit more? I mean, please, if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments below because I could use your help because I would really like to figure out how to maintain that center mass balance and not have the guide scope hanging off to one side and just uh, give me some ideas, all right? I do appreciate it. So currently I am somewhere between home and my destination and I am about to deliver a dog to its forever home. Now this dog previously belonged to my cousin and she has been fostering it for a little while now and has nursed it back to health into a beautiful loving dog and we have the perfect home for it and I am really excited to get Molly to her new home. So that's where I'm at right now, but I have a secret, you know, hope that I am going to get to walk through an astronomy store. Now this will be my very first astronomy store because why? There's none around me. I mean, why are there no astronomy stores anywhere here? I mean, I have to drive at least 10 hours to get to the nearest one and guess what? I'm not driving in that direction. I'm going a whole lot further down the road. So take a guess at where I'm landing, all right? It's not 10 hours, it's further, all right? So I'll let you guys stew on that one a little bit and I might send you some teasers once I get there. But guys, if you like this kind of video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I appreciate every one of you. We are growing quick, we are growing strong, and I am really proud of everything that we have built together, all right? If you have ideas for new videos that you would like, leave them in the comments. Follow me over there on Facebook or on my webpage as Amy Astro. Dot com, all right? You can reach out to me with the contact button, send me an email, say, hey, I want to see this, or I have a question, and I will do my very best to answer you, all right? So do that. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the alert bell so you know when I upload new astro-related material, and as always, I am wishing you all some wonderful health, clear skies, and I will see you all in the next video. I love all of y'all.